Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, I'm gonna show you how to set up and propagate this. This is any bottle Kratky. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to grow Kratky hydroponic lettuce and basil from seed through to full harvestable crop in any bottle that you like. Okay, so in our search for ever increasingly cheap alternatives, we've explored a lot of Kratky. But what I wanna explore with you today is probably the simplest, the easiest stepping stone into hydroponics. We'll be using bottles and containers that you will be able to recycle around the home to grow food. Now I will be growing them under lights and I will be using 3D prints, but both of those are optional. Hydroponics can be done outdoors under the sun and it can be done without 3D printing, obviously. The reason I'm doing it under lights is so I can control the conditions and the reason I'm using a 3D print is to make my life a little bit easier when I want to top it up. So what you'll need today, you'll need various styles of bottle. So I'm gonna be setting up multiple bottle styles so that you can get an idea of how to set up each type. I'll be using pretty standard generic bottle shapes so it applies to the largest population that I can possibly cater to. We'll be using cotton wool as well. Now, this is probably one of the most available resources as a grow media and we explored that in our cotton wool grow media experiments. So, we'll be using this today to start seeds within this crack key system. I'll also be using a 3D print which is optional. Now for this video, I've designed multiple 3D prints to suit various mouth sizes on various bottles. So here I have the basic bottle lid that will fit most bottles. So this will fit a standard beer bottle, like so. And it will also fit wine bottles and soft drink bottles or soda bottles for those across the Pacific. Okay, so first things first, before I show you how this print works, I'm going to fill up the bottles with nutrient. Now, pre-mixing the nutrient and adding it into the bottles will always be easier than just adding nutrient into the bottle and measuring it out bottle by bottle. I'll be using my pre-mixed nutrient. Now, the way you mix nutrient is going to depend on your nutrient, whether it's dry or liquid form, and the instructions for the nutrient will generally be on the bottle of the nutrient. So just follow the instructions. And for today, we're going to be mixing half strength nutrient, unless you've bought a specific leafy greens nutrient, at which point you should be mixing full strength. So I'm going to mix up my nutrient and we'll add it into the bottles. One other thing, make sure you've cleaned your bottles as well. In this watering can, I have hydroponic nutrient that I got out of my 1000 liter IBC, which has all my nutrient outside. I've watered it down to half. So it was actually at about three point something and I'm now at about 1.53 EC and the pH is 5.9. So that's pretty much perfect for what we want. We want just uh, leafy greens because we're just gonna be planting lettuce and I might do some basil as well because I've got some basil already existing in our cotton wool. I'm going to fill up these containers. So I don't think that these bottled plants are going to obviously last the entirety of their life cycle in just the bottles, obviously. But that's why I've designed this 3D print. Uh, the 3D print has a, a section for the plant to exist within, as well as a section for refilling, which I will show you how we'll do in a second. We've filled up the bottles as far as we want, and now we can add in our caps. Now, obviously, if you don't have a 3D printer, you can just use a whole bud, tease out the bottom, just stick your finger in a little bit to clear out a little bit of nutrient, and you can just place it into the top, like so, and that will wick up into the cotton bud, and it will actually allow the plant to grow down into the nutrient. I actually thought we might need toothpicks to hold this in place, but it looks like it's just gonna be fine. Just that cotton wool. So I'm just gonna push that in there and I'm gonna do a couple of the bottles as well, just with the cotton wool. So we can get an idea for those that don't have a 3D printer. Now we don't want it to be too dense. 
Remove as much as you can without the cotton wool falling through. And you can see on the sides, you just push it in the top there and you can see how that is going to work. It's going to wick up from below into the top there. And that is where we're going to put our seed or our plant. For the prints, we want to get the cotton wool into the print and have it so that it can be teased out the bottom like this. So we grab our print, we grab a cotton wool bud. The cotton wool bud is going to be too big, so we'll use half a bud, tease out a section like so, and we feed that in first. We can use something to push it through and then pull it out and just try and fill up the entire print like so. And this is going to wick up and this is going to give you a place to put the seed. And then that will just fit into the top of your bottle like so. And that is going to give us a place to plant the seed as well as a place to fill up the bottle as the nutrient drains. And at the base, the 3D print is designed so that it keeps the cotton from dropping through. Uh, it's got this uh, concave uh, design that holds the cotton in place and won't let it drop. So we'll go along, fill up our 3D prints, add them into our Models. And as you can see here, this is actually the first prototype of a scaled version of that print. So I've labeled in the actual STL file the size of the mouth that these prints suit. And you can just add these into different size bottles. All of the prints are different sizes. So I believe that this is a 28 millimeter and a 38 millimeter mouth size for individual bottles. Now I've only gone up to a certain size and I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to scale the rest. If you say wanted to go up to a mason jar size, that is possible. Um, the wall thickness will get quite thick at that point. And if there are people that are interested in mason jar versions of this, just let me know in the comments below and I'll mock up a mason jar version. I just don't have any mason jars on hand and I'm not really familiar with the sizes that are most common. So if you are requesting, please give me the internal size of the mason jars that you have and I'll make one to fit the most common size. All of these prints can be found on my Patreon. So if you're interested, head over to my Patreon and you can grab all of these prints and every other print that I've ever designed as soon as you jump on. Okay, I've got to wait for the prints to print to fill up these guys, but I'm going to plant out our small mouth bottles. Now, for the larger bottles, I'm going to go with pre-existing basil plants. In this cell tray, I've got a selection of, these are cos here, and at the top, I've got some basil, which have had a hit and miss rate of success. So I'm gonna use these basil in my big containers because they're gonna use a lot more water and nutrient than the lettuce. I'm gonna start the lettuce from seed and I'm gonna wet all these guys a little bit from above. Now, you can see on the ones without the prints, because there's no air able to escape, the water it will eventually go down into those bottles. But with the ones that do have the 3D prints, the water can go through and the air can escape through the air hole. Okay, so I'm gonna take these and we're gonna put them under lights. Okay, so here we've got the Spider Farmer SF600, and this is kind of at the perfect height already for our plants. I'm probably going to add to these as time goes on and I drink more, <laughs> which is a benefit to this system. It really encourages you to procure more bottles. There is obviously going to be differences in the heights of your bottles. If you have multiple grow lights, you can organize your bottles in such a way that one of the grow lights is lower to account for the height, or you can just place uh, a block of timber or something under it to sort of raise and lower as required. Now, you may have noticed that I haven't light proofed any of these bottles, and that is by design. I have a theory that the brown and green bottles won't develop as much algae as something like the Pepsi bottle, for example. I wanna see if I can get away with a grow without any treatment to the bottles at all. 
Now that is going to be much more useful than me going through a lot of effort to light proof boils that I don't need to light proof perhaps. It's been about 24 hours and I've printed a new size for the cocoa bottles. And these are the alternate sizes. With these alternate sizes, I've actually designed two different um, internal structures. So you've got the essentially completely hollow bottom with a little lip so that you can keep in cotton wool if you like, but have as much root space for the plants to come out as possible. Or if you want a substrate in them, uh, you can use this design, which is essentially, it's a, got a conical shape at the bottom, which prints without supports, and it will just allow you to hold media in it. So clay balls or whatever media you like, rather than it dropping out the bottom. Now, I believe these are 38 millimeter and 28 millimeter sizes for different size bottles. So I, I think that the 28 millimeter fits in a two liter or three liter milk carton, which will just plop in the top and allow you to use larger reservoirs, larger bottles for this system. These ones are actually scaled within the slicer itself. This is the 19 millimeter version, except I've scaled it up 25% because the cocoa bottles are only slightly larger than the soft drink bottles. You can do that yourself to make custom sizes. I wanted the 19 mil to be 25 mil, so I scaled it to 125%, which gives me around about 25 mil, hopefully. Let's have a look at that. And you can see that I've scaled up the one without the lip on it. This is the smaller version that fits over the top of soft drink containers, and it's got a lip. So that restricts the types of bottles you can use, but it does actually hold it nicely on top. This one does not have a lip, so I scaled it up because I only knew the internal diameter and I didn't want to adjust the external lip. So hopefully this will just, <laughs> how good. And you can see there, it just sort of slides into place and we can put our cotton wool straight into that and that's perfect. This is just working out really nicely. I wanted to put the ready-made basil into these. So we're going to actually, here is a basil seedling that has been prepared in the cotton wool technique. And I'm just going to thread the roots down through our 3D print. There we go. It's just a baby basil and it goes into the 3D print like so. And I can just drop that directly into the top of my crack key. And there we have a planted out, pre-propagated crack key hydroponic basil. And I'm gonna do that for the rest as well. And we can put these in place. And now we can set up the time-lapse cameras and see how they grow.
Okay, so what we have here is actually quite an impressive result. There are a few problems. You can obviously see that uh, the basil is outcompeting or outgrowing the lettuce, and it's also in the larger containers compounding the issue, so I've had to slope the light. But what I'm actually going to do is we're going to move the basil away, and we're gonna have similar sized plants and bottles in this one, and we're gonna move the basil over to a more powerful light so that I have a separate area for the basil to grow. The other issue that's not so much of an issue, but it's something that I knew that I'd come across, is that with our smaller bottles, we've actually run out of nutrient. Well, as you can see, there's a little bit of nutrient left in the bottom of that one. Um, I have come along and topped up the ones with cotton wool because they ran out a little bit faster. I'm not sure why that is, but I'm gonna show you how to top up both the cotton wool and the type with the 3D print, and we can rearrange the whole setup so that we are evenly growing plants. Just wanna give you a quick look at the bottle that we were time-lapsing, and you can see there's not really much algal growth at all. And any algal growth there is, isn't affecting the plant. We've got actually quite a nice healthy plant here. Pretty happy with just not worrying about the nutrient in this style of hydroponics. Um, the worst by far is over here where we've got the opaque bottles. I think that the opaque bottles are actually, you can see that one's not taken off very well at all. Um, but I think that the opaque bottles, and you can see this one's only got that much nutrient left. So this plant's going absolutely nuts. But you can see the opaque bottles actually spread the light out more than something like these clear bottles, which seem to not be affected by the light as much. Um, and I'll show you over here as well. I mean, have a look at this. This is pretty cool. The roots have actually made their way completely around the outside of that bottle. You can see there, which is, that's pretty cool. So the roots are using the bottle as grow media. Here is another clear one. And the wine bottle. The exterior of that bottle is being utilized, as you can see there, by the roots. Now, the reason that this is actually probably a bad thing with the cotton wool is because that's gonna make the cotton wool hard to pull out um, and there's no way of topping it up because the water and nutrient will be really hard to get into the top of that. Um, whereas with our other style, I can just push the plant aside and utilize that hole to top up the water. And for the larger basil plants, which do not require topping up because they're only halfway, I don't wanna top up above halfway. I wanna top up once they get down to about a quarter. So I'm going to put the basil plants under the new light setup, which is the Spider Pharma SF2000, 200 watt grow light. And that is going to give my basil plants a little bit more space. Okay, so interestingly, there is quite a difference between multiple plants in a bottle and one single plant in a bottle. So here we have multiple plants and here we have a single plant. I would recommend the single plant you are getting a lot more leaves, but if you want the leaves to be of any size, go with the single plant. It is also using a little bit more nutrient, but not much. I will not need to be topping up the larger containers with the lettuce. So this is probably a really nice size for your lettuce. This is a 1.125 liter Pepsi bottle. So for the smaller bottles um, with the 3D print, the way that we fill it up is just in that hole. We just pour it straight into that hole. And there we go. That's half full and our plant has nutrient again. I would definitely recommend moving something like this to a larger container so that you don't have to do that as often. You'll probably get a whole plant out of 1.125 litre bottle. Um, so a two litre bottle, you could probably have multiple plants. We're going to fill this up. So this is just half strength nutrient. Again, 1.0 to 1.5 EC, between 5.5 and 6 and 6.5 and 6.5 pH. And because I'm putting another plant in this, 
that's already been grown. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space at the top of the bottle. Um, and that is going to give the roots a little bit of breathing room. I'm going to use this plant, which is almost out of nutrient. There is a little bit left. It's got the 3D print on top. And I'm gonna show you, it's just a matter of popping this off like you would a bottle top and just pulling the roots out. And there we have our plant with its roots intact. And you can see how it's grown through that cotton wool. So there's our full plant and we can just feed that into our Coke bottle if you wanna transplant it. You can keep topping up that other bottle. This is just gonna make life a little bit easier. And there we go. And that just clips over the top of our bottle top. And that fits perfectly around the neck of the bottle. And there is our plant ready to grow. Now with the non 3D printable ones, so you see you just grip the plant, the cotton wool will be dry by now. So we just pull it up like that. There's our cotton wool and we can refill it or you can transplant it. So if we're gonna transplant this one, <laughs> I'll just leave that hanging there like that. We'll fill up a wine bottle. Now remember, don't go all the way to the top and we can delicately remove those roots. There's a lot of roots. Come on. There we go. Now I'd obviously recommend just starting them in whatever bottle, larger bottles you have. Um, I'm probably going to recommend by the end of this video uh, that you just start them in a large enough bottle rather than doing this process that I'm going through right now. Spread the roots out and you can see there, our roots are in the nutrient solution and our lettuce will continue growing. So once we've filled up and transferred all of our crack key bottles, we can continue the grow. And because I've got the bottles, I'm even gonna add some extras in and you're gonna get a really nice shot of the roots here. Pretty cool, hey? <laughs> Okay, so I'm actually quite happy that I did that last transplantation test and then subsequent time-lapse because there are a few things I'd like to discuss about the technique in general now that I have reviewed the time-lapse material and we've transplanted and I've seen some results from the transplantation. So I'm just gonna move these plants over and we can discuss the differences between the plants that have been transplanted and the plants that have gone full term in their bottles. Okay, so there are a few observations I'd like to discuss about this grow style, but the most stark observation that I've made after transplanting is that transplanting probably isn't a great idea. On the left are all of the transplanted plants or smaller bottles that I've topped up. Now, the smaller bottles being topped up had the same effect as the transplanted plants. Essentially, you are disturbing the roots and or drowning the roots. As you can see, we've got some quite unhappy plants. This is from me transplanting and drowning the roots, as you saw with the plant in this Coke bottle. I thought that it'd actually work fine. However, in practice, it ended in this result, which is in contrast to the bottles on my right. Now, the bottles on my right have not been filled at all. And with the wine bottles, they're actually about to run out of nutrient. As you can see, 
we've almost come to the end of the nutrient in these bottles. And that is absolutely fine because these are about of a harvestable size. So this 750 ml bottle would probably be my recommendation as the smallest bottle that you use with this style. And with the 3D prints, you are able to top them up, but I wouldn't top them up above about a quarter or maybe a third of the bottle if you want to get a little bit extra growth out of a plant such as this. Ideal sizing would be something like this. This is the Pepsi bottle plant. It is completely exploring the nutrient with its roots. And the sizing of this bottle is, I actually believe, perfect. That is a really nice head of lettuce. And you could be harvesting the leaves from the bottom of this lettuce, the entire grow, if you like. I'm actually gonna remove this label. And you can see what the roots look like internally within that bottle. Now this is actually really good news for those who don't have a 3D printer, it means that you can get away with sticking cotton wool into the top of a 1.125 litre Pepsi bottle and allowing the grow in its entirety to complete and you will end up with a head of lettuce that is harvestable without any need for topping up whatsoever. Now the 3D print does hold the cotton wool nicely and if you do need to top it up, it gives you that option without disturbing the roots but I don't think that you will need to top up your plants in that manner. As you can see, I had no issue with algae. There is a green tinge to the bottle, but it has not affected the plant at all. And I'm happy to recommend that you don't need to cover your bottles when growing under grow lights indoors. Now, I am not sure how these will cope outdoors because there is something called the inverse square law, which in layman's terms means that light diminishes by the square of its distance. That just means that light from a grow light acts in a different way than light that is outside because the distance to the sun is so far that the inverse square law really doesn't affect outdoor growers. However, indoor growers, because of this law, the light at the top of the bottle will be a lot more intense than the light that hits the bottle itself. So that may be the reason that I'm not getting any algal buildup, but I will test this style of growing without covering the bottles outdoors to see if that affects it in the future. Hit subscribe and it'll probably be within one of my update videos. Another benefit to this technique is that you can use glass bottles without the use of plastic at all, especially if you're using just the cotton wool technique. So if you've been looking for a plastic free hydroponic solution, this is it. All of the basil behind me grew from start to finish within the same bottles. I have actually topped a couple of these basils up without any adverse effects and I just topped them up a quarter and they've gone from start to finish in the same bottles. So I am actually extremely happy with how this method has worked with the basil plants. And you can see here, we have some really nice root formation down in those bottles. And the plants themselves are actually really healthy. I'm actually quite pleased with how this technique has worked for basil especially. So I can highly recommend a two litre bottle with or without the 3D print. You may be able to achieve this without the 3D print if you have cotton wool and use the skewer technique to hold the cotton wool in place. But these 3D prints are a really good solution for the larger bottles if you do want to utilize milk bottles, coconut water bottles, or these larger juice bottles. So I'll just quickly give you a look at the roots on the basil plants because I'm actually quite excited to see the roots on the basil plants myself. So we'll just pull this out. There we 
There we go. It's actually smaller roots than I thought that it'd have. And internally, there's really not much algae in the bottom of these containers. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. All of those 3D print files are available on my Patreon. So head over there and you get access to all of those files and more. Happy hydroponicking and I will see you next time on Who Chose. That's a really good result. I, I'm stoked. Yeah.